17-year-old Harry Brown started working in a large iron steelworks in Lancashire. One Saturday, an inspector came into his factory. He was doing a weekly inspection and he called across to Harry Brown, a very good morning to you. Harry Brown called back and a very good morning to you as well. And the inspector said, how are you this morning? Uh, Harry Brown said, I'm all right. No, you're not, the inspector said, but I am and I'm all right for eternity. Well, Harry Brown thought that was a bit strange, but throughout the rest of the week, he couldn't get it out of his mind, the idea that he was not all right. So next week, again, the man came in Saturday morning. Very good morning to you. Good morning to you as well, Harry Brown replied. And the man said, how are you this morning? Well, I'm half right, Harry Brown replied. No, you're not, the man said. You're either right or you're wrong. And I'm all right. I'm all right for eternity. This really annoyed Harry Brown. The man seemed to be so sure of what he was saying. And he decided that he would go and visit his old grandmother. His grandmother was a Christian. And although Harry Brown knew nothing about it, didn't understand anything about Christianity really, but he knew his grandmother was different. He went to see her and they chatted about this and that. He didn't want to tell her what had been happening, but she pointed to a framed hymn that was on her wall in a bedroom. And this is what the hymn said. In peace, let me resign my breath and thy salvation see. My sins deserve eternal death but Jesus died for me. Well, as Harry Brown left, he didn't understand what that was about, but he thought, well, it sounds as though she's all right. So next Saturday, he was ready for his tormentor. And when the inspector came in, he said, a very good morning to you. A very good morning to you as well, Harry Brown replied. And the man said, how are you this morning? He said, I'm all wrong. The man stopped. He took him by his shoulders. He said, when a young man realizes he's all wrong, then God can do something for him. He said, I want you to come along to a gospel service that's being held tomorrow. Well, Harry Brown began to make his excuses. He'd never gone to anything like that before. He wasn't really that interested, but he was intrigued by what the man was saying. But he said, no, I won't be going. Two men came into the room and they were both Christians who worked with Harry Brown and they invited him as well. So he decided, yes, he would go along and just see what this was about. Well, he arranged to meet one of the workers there just outside the hall, and they went into this gospel service. Harry Brown was steered quite close to the front, closer to the front than he really wanted to be. And he'd never heard anything like this before. The singing was so loud, and it seemed so enthusiastic. People seemed to be quite happy. And then the preacher got up on the platform. He was a Scottish evangelist, and he started to preach. And Harry Brown felt that he was being punched and kicked. As the man was preaching, it seemed as though he was just exposing Harry Brown's life and Harry Brown's sins. When he got home that night, he said he could, he took a long time to get to sleep. And he said, I was bruised. He didn't mean physically, but spiritually, mentally, he was bruised. He never heard this before, that he was a sinner who needed God's salvation. Well, next morning, uh, one of the workers came to him and said, how did you enjoy the service last night? Oh, well, not very well at all, he said. Well, will you come back tonight? The man's preaching for two weeks. Harry Brown thought, no, I'm not going back tonight. Anyway, later on that day, he decided he would go back. And so he went along that night. Well, it was worse than the first night. And he emerged thinking, I can't go back there again. I can't stand it. The man is pointing at me. He's looking at me. He's speaking about me. It's all about me. And he's just exposing what a sinner I am. He couldn't even sleep that night thinking about what he'd heard. And the next evening, strange to say, he found himself back at the gospel service again. This went on for two weeks. He went along to every service and he was learning that he was a sinner, but that the Lord Jesus had died for sinners on the cross and that he needed to get right with God. He needed to repent of his sins, to turn to the Lord Jesus. And it was the last service. At the end of the service, he said he was trembling and shaking. He got to his feet and he proclaimed out loud, I accept the Lord Jesus to be my personal saviour. And immediately he felt that his sins had been dealt with and that he had received forgiveness and a new life. Shortly after that, he was baptised. He gathered with local Christians as they remember the Lord Jesus, breaking bread and drinking the wine each Sunday. And soon he was being involved in the gospel witness. He wanted to tell others about his faith. He started with the Sunday school, then the Bible class, then some preaching in the open air, then preaching in halls. And it seemed that although he felt himself to be a very indifferent preacher, he had such a reality and such an experience 
that it was obvious that he was gifted to tell others about the Lord Jesus. During the First World War, he was involved as a medical orderly in the British Army. This meant that he was posted overseas to Africa, and he had experiences in that continent, and he also had experiences of sharing the gospel with African people. And this lodged in his mind. He'd always been interested in taking the gospel to other people who'd never heard about the Lord Jesus. He came back to Britain after the war, and he was involved in gospel work in the south and southwest of England. He would have tent meetings, he would preach in the tent, and he would travel around the small villages in Wiltshire and the southwest of England, and many, many people were converted. And eventually, in 1923, he had been married, and he and his wife sailed for Africa. The rest, as they say, is history. He and his wife spent the rest of their lives serving the African people, preaching the gospel, and the stories of his exploits in Africa are legendary. He could turn his hand to almost anything, whether it was building work, engineering, dentistry, health work, anything practical, but above all, he was there to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus. And many, many African people came to know the Lord Jesus through the preaching of Harry Brown. He served the Lord well into his 90s, and how thankful he was for that moment when he realized that the Lord Jesus had died for him and when he stood up publicly and accepted the Lord Jesus to be his Savior. Thank you very much for watching.